Amen. God bless you. And welcome to Unshackle Ministries here in the city of Paramount. We're so happy you could all be with us here this evening. I believe God has a good word, a good word of wisdom for each and every one of us. Amen. So uh, we're going to go ahead and pray and get into our Bible study and, uh, and ask the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us through this whole time that we're here together in Jesus' name. And that God will be glorified. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight for this great time that you've given to us to come together. Lord, we thank you for the place, your house that you've blessed us with, Lord God, to be able to come, Lord God, to put aside anything and everything else, Lord God, to come and to, and to you know, to read your word, Lord, and to gain understanding and wisdom from your word tonight, Lord. And we just thank you and give you all the glory that it will help us, we will grow, and uh, we will be blessed. In Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, I got a little bit of uh, sad news. It's really a lot of sad news for me, but um, um, Brother Garza, uh, Eddie Garza, he passed away uh, yesterday. Um, I don't know I really a lot about what happened. I know that God blessed him and he came home to be with his family. For the last uh, week and a half, I believe, and then um, I don't know what happened, but um, he went to be with the Lord, and I believe that God opened those gates up, and he's up there dancing and breathing the Lord's the Lord's air right now in Jesus' name. Amen. So, um, but keep his family in prayer. Regards his family. He had um, three daughters and three sons, and a bunch of grandchildren, and um, his. Um, his family is putting up videos of all, all his his uh, times with them at the home and things like that. And it's a blessing to see. Um, I, I've known him for a lot, a lot of years. You know, uh, before we even started the church, we used to go to church in Norwalk. And so that was a long time. Him and his family, as they were growing, then they moved to the the stuff same street we lived in in Paramount and um, it was just a blessing to know him and have him as a friend and brother in the Lord and um, I just really pray for his family and ask God's comfort and strength unto each and every one of them. Amen? Amen. And um, keep um, Sister Edith Ann in prayer. She wasn't feeling very good and now Sister um, Betty as well. Amen? them in prayer. Um, kind of a hot day today, isn't it? Amen. Praise God. But uh, we're going to get into the Word and may it stir our hearts up today. Amen? Hallelujah. And I pray that when you leave Bible study tonight, that you will be like the two men, the two disciples that were on the road to Emmaus. After Jesus rose from the dead, Jesus walked with them for a certain amount of, of a time until they got to their destination and um, he explained a lot of things to them while he was walking with them. And then when he departed from them, they asked each other, did you not feel the fire, a fire burning inside of you when he was telling us all of these things? Amen. And um, I think that when we hear the word of God, it should bring that zeal, that excitement into our hearts, no matter what we're going through. Amen. Because to study the word of God, to hear the word of God, is to be in the presence of Jesus. Amen. Because Jesus is the word of God. Amen. Hello. Well, the Lord put something in my heart today as I was doing my devotionals. <clears throat> And it says, according to Proverbs chapter 2, I want to share a couple of things I found concerning wisdom because that's what it talks about, wisdom. Um, while you're moving and you're, you're getting your Bibles out and, and moving to Proverbs chapter 2, I'll share it with you. It says, the first part of Proverbs examines the nature of wisdom and applies wisdom to specific, to specific issues. But, but what according to the Bible, but what according to the Bible is wisdom? And how 
will the wise person live? The nature of wisdom, the Hebrew word group that expresses the idea of wisdom, has as its root the verb hakam. The word in this group occurs in the Old Testament of the Bible 300 times. Hakam deals with an individual's approach to life itself. It is practical in nature and yet it is spiritual. For biblically speaking, wisdom provides the insight to master life's challenges through a responsive personal relationship with God. In essence, wisdom has to do with choosing, with choosing what is right and good as we live our daily lives. A wise person is one who is sensitive to the Lord and who subjects himself to God. A wise person will apply guidelines revealed by God and make his daily decisions based on these truths. In its deepest meaning, wisdom unites God's word and everyday experiences. And it is, and it is only in the way a person lives his life that wisdom can be demonstrated. It says in Proverbs chapter 2, it says, For the Lord gives wisdom, and from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. And then you'll understand what is right and just and fair, every good path. For wisdom will enter your heart, and knowledge will be pleasant to your soul. Wisdom will save Wisdom will save you from the ways of wicked men and from men who are perverse. In scripture, there's a clear distinct distinction drawn between intelligence and wisdom. One may have great intellectual capabilities, but unless a person accepts the word of God and applies them to make his or her choices in life, that person can hardly be called wise, even though they're intelligent. There is in fact many an intelligent person who makes wrong moral choices and thus in biblical terms is a fool. The book of Proverbs is intended to be a word to the wise. It is a book with a moral foundation designed to help us make godly choices. Thus the book's opening explains that the Proverbs are in 1 verse 2 and 3 it says for attaining wisdom and discipline for understanding words of insight and for acquiring a disciplined and prudent life doing what is right, just and fair. In scripture Morality always has spiritual roots. So Proverbs says in Proverbs 1 7, the fear of the Lord, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and discipline. Fear in this context is not terror, but respect. To respect the Lord is what it says. The fear, the respect for the Lord. The person who has a deep respect for God, who acknowledges him as creator and Lord, is the one who will listen attentively to God's word and will apply them daily. And for this reason, wisdom begins with faith in God. But for a person of faith to be wise, he must act with full trust in God and live according to that word. Amen? No. Praise God. Uh, I'll go on a little bit more in a minute, but first let's get into this word here. Amen. We're going to start on chapter 1. Proverbs 1. And it says, the Proverbs, the Proverbs of Solomon, son of David, king of Israel. And like we read a minute ago, for attaining wisdom and discipline, for understanding words, of insight 
for acquiring a disciplined and prudent life, doing what is right, just, and fair. Amen? So it tells us what it's for, amen? That we may gain this in here. For giving prudence to the simple, knowledge and discretion to the young. Let the wise listen and add to their learning and let the discerning get guidance. For understanding proverbs and parables, the sayings and riddles of the wise. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and discipline. Go to chapter 2, verse 1. My son, if you accept my words and store up my commands within you, turning your ear to wisdom, we've already discussed what wisdom is, right? Hello? The respect for the Lord, the fear of the Lord brings wisdom and knowledge. And store up my commands within you, turning your ears to wisdom and applying your heart to understanding. And if you call out for insight and cry aloud for understanding, amen? And if you look for it as for silver and search for it as for hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. And I like this as we come to it, we stop for a minute and pause because it tells us here that, you know, if you accept God's word, hello, and I believe we're here today because we've accepted God's word. Amen. God's word is what? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the word of God. And you've accepted Jesus Christ into your heart, right? Hello. And it says in here, if you accept my words and store up my commands within you. In other words, you have to be able to store them into you. They shouldn't be stored on a shelf, on a phone, in some other kind of place, but the word of God is to be stored inside of us. Amen. Hello? Because it's so important, but we lack that. And if you're honest, you'll tell the truth that you lack it. Why? Because Anyways, let's go out and read. It says, In store of my commands within you, turning your ear to wisdom and applying your heart to understanding. Amen? And those are two very important things. You have to turn your ear to wisdom. You have to put yourself in a place where you can gain wisdom. Hello? Amen. Gain the Word of God. Put it on your music. Put it in your phones. Read it in your Bibles. Do it in prayer. Hello. And make yourself respect God. Hello. Sometimes we respect, and, and this is a true thing, and nobody's to get offended and not step in on nobody's toes. Sometimes we respect man more than we respect God. Because we'll listen to man's rules, whether they're good or bad. Whether they're, whether they're for the things of God or against the things of God. Sometimes we listen to, to man rather than God. When in all the time, our choice should be plain and seen. If it's plain and seen, you won't be afraid right. to talk about who you are in Christ. What your identity is today. Hello? Right. I'm a Christian. The word of God is stored in me. Jesus Christ lives in me. Amen? Amen. Right. And then it's not just to be said, it's to be for real. Hello? Stored in you. You can't store it, nothing in you. I mean, I can't run around and say, I got a full tank of gasoline in my car if the, if the needle says empty, right? Hello? I mean, I'd be foolish to say, hey, my tank's full, let's go for a ride. Right? And only you know how full your tank is. And sometimes we get happy just having little memory scriptures. Hello? But I'm telling you something. God has given us a full diet of himself. Right. Amen? And that's the whole counsel of God. The whole counsel of God is reading your word and knowing the word. Amen? Knowing the people, the circumstances, the times, the things that happened, how God did things, and how the people reacted, and how the people did things. 
You know, and there's so much wisdom in there. Proverbs is actually highlights it all for us. Amen. For helping us to gain wisdom and learning how to live. Hello? Hi, I can't hear nobody. Praise God. Okay. If you accept my words. How many of you accept God's word today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah, yes. And store up my commands within you. Amen. What are God's commands? Hello? I'm not just talking about the Ten Commandments, but what are God's commands? What did Jesus say are the two greatest commandments? As yourself. Amen? Praise God. See, we obey those things. We trust God because that's God's wisdom. Hello? Amen. Praise God. So turning your ear to wisdom and applying your heart to understanding. You see, when when I read, I read and I put myself there, that's putting my ear to it. But then I'll read and then I want to understand more. Amen. God, how can I make this practical for my life today? Amen. How is it going to help me to make choices? How is it going to help me to make decisions? How is it going to help my thought life? Amen. How is it going to help me to think of myself, to think of others? Hello. You see, that's wisdom in all of that. And God shows us through the book of Proverbs, amen, how to live our lives through his word. Amen. He goes out and he says, he says, and if you call out for insight and cry aloud for understanding. And verse 3 is one of the most powerful verses in this, in this chapter. Because if you see right there, what do you think they're talking about? If you, and if you call out for insight and cry aloud for understanding. What do you think they're talking about right there? Anybody want to help me here? Anything else? Anybody else? What is it telling us there? Cry out to God. What do we usually call crying out to God? Praying. Prayer. Praying. 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 Praying for these things. Amen. Hello. And that's what it tells us there. To cry out to God in your prayers. You know, not just God help me through the day. Not just, and I'm not mocking anybody. Hello. Not just those little shallow, simplified prayers which are thankful to God, but God wants you to go deeper. Amen. There's a scripture in the Bible that says, deep calleth unto deep. Amen. Hello. And God wants this for you and me, for us. That we get down and we cry, Lord, fill me with wisdom. Lord, give me insight. Lord, give me understanding of your word, Lord. Amen. And sometimes we want to look around here. We want to look around there. We want to study there. And that's good, too, if the Lord leads you in that direction. But God himself, through his word, and the Holy Spirit will give you understanding. Amen. Glory to God. Hello. Amen. So that's a good one right there. It says, if you call out for insight and cry out for understanding, amen. And if you look for, and this is the key part. Now look, this is how deep you got to go. Because you will go, you will do just about, you know, anything or everything for treasure, for diamonds, gold, money, or whatever. Hello. Amen. I don't mean anything bad or foul. I'm just talking about sometimes... We really go out of our way for for um, for the treasures of this world. Hello, and we'll go hard at it. We'll work on it. We'll stay up late. We'll work extra hours. We'll do things, you know, that sometimes hurt us physically, and sometimes we'll do things under duress or stress. Hello, but you'll do it right because you're trying to you're trying to make a living. Am I right or wrong? But the Bible's telling us here that if we search for wisdom, it says, if you call out for insight and cry out for understanding, and if you look for it as for silver and search for it as for hidden treasure, amen, that means you got to apply yourself. 
in a deep way. You have to search things out. You have to look into things out. Amen? And then you'll gain understanding and you, God will speak to your heart. Amen. Amen? And that's taking a real deep look into the Bible and, you know, and getting into um, into the, the, the Psalms, the, the Prophets, the New Testament, the Old Testament. Amen? There's some, sometimes there's people that like to stay stuck in certain topics. Amen. But I believe that Proverbs helps in character development. And I'm talking about the character of Christ, a life filled with wisdom that makes choices. Amen. Hello. And if you search for it as for hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord. Again, the fear of the Lord meaning respect for the Lord. Amen. And you will find the knowledge of God. Because verse 6 says this, For the Lord gives wisdom. Hello? For the Lord gives wisdom. Amen. Praise God. Let's go real quick like I just want to just thought of this. So. Let's go to, to uh, James chapter 1. If you read in James chapter 1 starting on verse 5 it says if any of you lacks wisdom amen this is what we talked about already you know, lacks lacks wisdom in making choices in how you live hello because you can only see wisdom in you in how you live what comes out of your mouth the choices you make the actions you take. Hello? Praise God. And it says here, if any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God who gives, who gives, who gives what? Gives what? If any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God who gives what? Generously, liberally, right? To all, to all, without finding fault. And it will be given to him. It says, but when he asks, he must believe and not doubt. Because he who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. That man should not think he will receive anything from the Lord. He is double-minded and unstable in all he does. Amen? Amen? So if you want wisdom from God, be determined. Amen? Have a heart that goes after it. You know, when you have a goal that you want to get something accomplished. Amen? Hello? I don't know about you, but like when I used to when I used to um, coach uh, baseball and and train for boxing, you see, I had a goal that I was going after, and I would have to work hard and train hard in order to so that I would go in there and be able to fulfill the mission that I was on. And my mission for me that I've always been on is to win. Hello, Man. you don't win all the time, but my heart always wants to win. Amen. Because that's that's the way God has made me amen praise God the devil the devil did a good job on me trying to make me think I was a loser think that I was an animal think that I was no good that I wasn't worth anything but Jesus Christ came and he showed me that I was worth something to him amen. hello amen. praise God it says, so he says, in, 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 and search for it as, back to Proverbs chapter 2. Um, and search for it as for hidden treasure. Then you'll understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. It says in verse 6, for the Lord gives wisdom. And from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. Praise God. Isn't that an awesome thing how, how he's telling us these things? If you if you accept the Lord, amen. If you store it in yourself, amen. If you if you if you seek God with all of your hearts, amen, and not lean to your own understanding, that the Lord will guide you, the Lord will direct you, the Lord will lead you. Amen. Hello. And when you keep going, it says in here, verse 6 again, the Lord gives wisdom, and from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. Praise God. Jesus came and spoke the living word to us from the Father. Amen. Amen. Jesus was the living word. Amen. Amen. So we put our thoughts on Jesus, right? Because Amen. the Bible tells us, keep your eyes on Jesus. Amen. The author and the finisher of our faith. Praise God. 
So keep your eyes on Jesus, keeping it on the word. And like that silly little wristband used to say, what would Jesus do, right? In your thoughts. Because sometimes our thoughts will come and we're wasting our thoughts. We're like, um, um, you know, you think you're thinking about, I mean, I don't know. Well, maybe I'm just talking about myself. Amen. But I have to get my thoughts into check all the time. Because I'm a daydreamer sometimes. I'll get look out the window and I'm focused here, but I look out the window and I'm daydreaming about a vacation. Hello. Or I'm looking over here, I'm focused on my mind. I have to I have to catch myself, loop myself, and say, God, in the name of Jesus, and I'm up by myself. There's nobody disrupting me. There's nobody trying to take me out of focus, at least that I can see there, amen. It's just me sometimes. My thoughts will start to wander. I'll start thinking about oh. What do I got to do? What I'm going to make for dinner? What I'm going to do here? What do I, you know, and you just start going that way and you lose focus on what God's trying to say to you right there at that moment. Hello. God wants to speak to us. God wants to speak to you. Amen? Amen. But we have to be willing to accept his word. Sometimes, amen. Praise God. Because this is a reward. Now check it out. He says, look at it. He says, he holds victory in store for the upright. He's a shield to those whose walk is blameless. Now, victory and shield are important things to me. I want God to shield me from the attacks that come through life, the troubles that come through life, the troubles that come through people, amen? I want the victory. I still have that. That's why I love Jesus, because Jesus always talks about victory, and I always like to live in victory, amen? amen. Hello? Praise God. You know, a long time ago, many, many years ago, before I came to the Lord, the, the, the devil tried to make a prophecy over my life. Amen. I kind of wrote it down. He said, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do you in. I'm gonna get your family. And every kind of thing like that, just just you know, it kind of like it was just ugly. And then I started coming down and says, wait a minute. You're not doing that to me, devil. Amen. Now, this is what I didn't know the Lord. I didn't know the Lord was going to come get me, though, because I was saying, God swore me, not against me. Amen. Not in those words, but in my heart. Are you here with me? But the devil's a liar. And the devil, you know, he God comes to thwart and destroy the works of the devil. That's why Jesus came. Hello? Amen. Praise God. Okay, it says he holds in store victory for him. He holds victory in store for the upright. Amen. Now, praise God. Now, when you read that, you say, he holds the victory for you if you're what? If you're what? Okay. Upright. It's right there in front of us. You see, he's telling us very clearly, but sometimes, sometimes it's, we just don't get it. I've been on this thing where I've been sharing this with people. It says, Mike's mother has three kids. One is named Nicole, and the other is named Nicholas. What's the name of the third child? Mike. Yeah, that's good. Not too many people get it right away. But you see the answer is right there in the question. And that's the way God's word is for us. The answer is right here in the word for us. Amen. Whatever you're going through, whatever you're troubled with, the answer is in the Bible for us. Amen. Right. But you just have to see it. That's what... You know, and that's what we have to learn that, 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 you know, in our old ways, in our old ways, the Bible says that, that Satan blinds the eyes of unbelievers. What is he blinding their eyes to? To the things God has for us, to the blessings of God, to the salvation of God. Hello? Amen. It says, he holds victory in store for the upright. He's a shield to those whose walk He's a shield to those whose walk is what? Blameless. Now blameless. 
for he guards the course of the just. All of those things are rewarding things. The victory, the shield, he guards our path, our walk in life. Amen? Yeah. Hello? But he says two things. He says four things actually there. He says, first of all, you got to be upright. He says, you got to be blameless. He says, you have to be just. And then the last one, he says, you have to be faithful. Amen. For he guards the course of the just and protects the way of his faithful ones. Then you will understand what is right and just and fair in every good path. Amen. Amen. You'll understand every good, every every fork in the road you come to, where you get stuck at. Amen. You got to make a decision. It sounds good to go this way, and it sounds good to go this way. But what get what way does God want you to go? Amen. Hello. Do you know? You know when you come to the forks, those choices, the decisions. Amen. Should I lie or should I not lie? Should I cheat or should I not cheat? Amen. Yeah. Should I be honest or should I not be honest? You know, those, those are when we come, when you see the integrity of your heart. The integrity of your heart should be the way, the truth, and the life. Yeah. Hello? Praise God. It says in verse 10, For wisdom will enter your heart. For wisdom will enter your heart. And knowledge will be pleasant to your soul. Discretion will protect you and understanding will guard you. Praise God. Isn't that so good? Hello? Now it goes on to show us how wisdom can protect us. Amen. It says here in verse 12, it says, Wisdom will save you from corrupt companionship. Amen. Hello? Corrupt companionship. What is corrupt companionship to you? A drunk, a drug addict, a prostitute, a, a, a criminal? Is that a corrupt companionship? Or is corrupt companionship an unbelieving family member? Is corrupt companionship an unbelieving friend? Amen? Is corrupt companionship the unchurched? Hello? You know, there's all those different places where we don't look, but we, we let ourselves be influenced by certain peoples. Hello? Yeah. It says here in verse 12, wisdom. What? What did you say? What? 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 Wisdom. wisdom. Maybe, maybe you got to say wisdom. 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 Amen. There's, you know, there's worldly wisdom, right? And then there's heavenly wisdom. Wisdom from up, from above is, is it comes from God, perfect gift. Amen. Wisdom from above, and it's something that we should seek because it will protect you. It says, "Wisdom will save you from the ways, from the ways of wicked men, wicked people." Amen. Do wicked people have ways? Yep. Yeah. Have you ever met a wicked person? Yeah. I'm not talking about a monster from a monster movie. I'm not talking about Chucky or whatever the other one's name. What are the other one's names? See, they know them. I'm not talking about the fairy tale ones. Those are written in something. But, you know, there's wicked men, people that are dressed in, you know, like the Bible says, that don't be surprised for Satan himself can and transform himself into an angel of light. Amen. Amen. So therefore, we need to be careful too about about those you know who try to help us and guide us. Amen. Because if we start to seek guidance from something other than what God says, you know, then it could be it can carry results that are not too favorable. Amen. Hello. It says, wisdom will save you from the ways of wicked men. What are some of the ways of wicked people? Let's just say bad people. Or maybe we should just say sinful people. 
perverse speech. What is perverse speech? Right away, we're going to think perverse speech is nothing but profanity, right? But that's not just perverse speech. Any Perverse means um, that that you make that's good, you make it bad. Hello? You make it you make it ugly, you make it nasty. Hello? Are you here with me? Yeah. It says, wisdom will save you from the ways of wicked men, from men whose words are perverse, who leave. So I, I like this because it tells you that at one time, at one time they were on the right road. Amen? Yeah. At one time they were going the right way. At one time they were kneeling before the king of kings. But then for some reason, for somehow they abruptly just because of their own pride and arrogancy or whatever it is, they feel unsatisfied. Amen? Hello? They turn against the ways of the Lord. Hello? Yeah. Wisdom will save you from the ways of wicked men, from men whose words are perverse, who leave the straight path to walk in dark ways, who delight in doing wrong and rejoice in the perverseness of evil, whose paths are crooked and who are devious in their ways. Now, in this world, I'm telling you, we run across those people every day. Hello? There's people like that all over the place, and they don't have a sign on that says that I'm a wicked person. Amen? The system sometimes is set up like that for them to, to want to lie to you, to cheat you, to sell you a product, to sell you a place, to sell you a thing. Hello? But it's up to us to understand that God will protect you if you seek His wisdom. And He says here that God's wisdom will protect you from situations and people as, as these. Amen? Amen? Not only that, it helps in another way. Look at what it says here. It says also, it will save you also from the adulteress. Oh. <clears throat> now what is the adulteress as well? Anybody want to share with me what an adulteress is? Someone, some woman that leaves her covenant and her covenant of covenant with the, in her marriage, right? To go and sleep or to be with another man, right? Right? That's not what they're talking about as adulteress. That she leaves all of those things and she goes out there and and does her funky thing. Hello. Right? And it says that the wisdom will 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 save us, protect us. From that woman. Amen? It says, it will save you also from the adulteress, from the wayward wife with her seductive words. I like the way they put it here that the evil, wicked man has um, um, words that are perverse, but the adulterous uh, woman, she has seductive words. What are seductive words? Seductive words, something to draw you in. Now, if you stop looking at the human side of it and quit thinking about the uh, adulterous wife, you look at the, adul the, the adulterous spirit. Amen. Jezebel. They will come. Um, uh, Jezebel or Luciferic, um, you know, they're, they're both the same. They both work the same kind of way. Amen. Um, to try to, to thwart um, um, leadership and, and things of that sort. Amen. But they don't do it. Just come out straightforward. They come out in cunningness, seductiveness to win their case. But God says that he, his wisdom will protect us from her. Amen? Yeah. It says it will save you also from the adulteress, from the wayward wife with her seductive words, who has left the partner of her youth and ignored the covenant she made before God. For her house, the woman that lives like this or does this or the spirit that leads this way, her house leads down to death and her paths 
to the spirits of the dead. None who go to her return or retain the paths of life. Amen. So gaining wisdom tells us that we, we start looking at God's word, amen, and understanding what God's word is telling us. Hello? And letting it lead us. Amen. Letting us retain it. Amen. So that we can make choices. So that we can put up our defenses. So we can be alert. Amen. We can discern Amen. what's of God and what's of man, what's cunning, what's trying to lead us the wrong way. Amen. Hello? Then there's a number three thing. There's a number three thing. It protects you from those two things, which you can, I can break that down and go into a lot of different things for each one of them. The, the, the wicked man and the adulterous uh, wayward wife. It says, thus, verse 20 says, thus you will walk in the ways of good men and keep to the paths of the righteous. For the upright will live in the land, and the blameless will remain in it. Ooh, that's good, huh? How many of you are blameless tonight? Amen. Praise God. It says in here, but the wicked will be cut off from the land, and the unfaithful will be torn from it. That's Proverbs chapter 2. Amen. Hello? We must accordingly receive the word of God with all readiness of mind and bid it welcome, even the commandments as well as the promises, without murmuring or disputing. Amen? Don't argue with God. Amen. Like Peter said, who am I to argue with God? Or, or I'm sorry, it was the Pharisees that were talking. They said, we can't, you know, we don't want to be fighting against God. Hello? <sighs> we should also, we should be like this every day. Speak, Lord, for your servant hears you. Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. I'm the good shepherd. I call them by name. The voice of a stranger, they will not follow. Amen. Hello. We must hide them with us as we do our treasures. Amen. How many of you got? Well, I don't want you to let everybody know. But how many of you got treasures that you keep in a safe place? Anybody? How many of you got treasures you keep? You guys don't want to admit it, huh? <laughs> you know, you got monies, you got to keep away, you got jewelry. And those are treasures. Amen? Yes. And you keep them hidden somewhere, right? Why? Because they are valuable to you, right? Because you want them there when you want to use the money or dress up and put your jewelry on. Amen? Hello? Praise God. So, but the Word of God, we must hide it in, in us as we do our treasures, which we are afraid of being robbed of. We must not only receive but retain, amen? Because we receive, today you're receiving the word of God, but are you gonna retain it when you leave here tonight? Amen. Hello? It says we must, we must not only receive, but retain the word of God and lodge it in our hearts. Let it live in our hearts. Amen. That, that, it may, that it may be always ready to us, that you'll know because the word of God will help you in times of choices, Amen. in times of fear, hello, in times Amen. of attack, Amen. Amen. Are you here with me? Praise God. We must incline our ear to them. We must lay hold on all opportunities of hearing the word of God and listen to it with, 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 <clears throat> with attention and seriousness as those that are afraid of letting it slip. We must apply our hearts to them, else inclining the ear to them will stand us not nowhere. Amen? And we must be much in prayer, as it said in verse 3. We must cry after knowledge as one is ready, as, 
as one that is ready to perish for hunger makes for for bread makes hard for bread faint desires brothers and sisters faint shallow desires will not prevail we must be opportunist as those that know the word of the knowledge and of our own want of it we must cry as newborn babes after the sincere milk of the word as first peter chapter 2 verse 2 tells us we must lift our voices we must lift our voices for understanding and lift it up to heaven because that's where every good and perfect gift must be expected from as it says in James 1:17. we must give our voice to understand so the word is speak for it vote for it submit the tongue to the commands of wisdom we must consecrate our voice to it having applied our heart to it we must employ our voice in seeking it Solomon could write all this down for us amen he prayed for wisdom and he obtained it you can write these down I don't have time to read them to you today but I'm going to just in 1st Kings chapter 3 verses 5 through 14 in 1st Kings chapter 4 verse 29 in 1st Kings chapter 3 16 through 28 and in that one there I'm going to share that with you real quick like there was two prostitutes they lived together both of them had babies and this is but one of the prostitutes rolled over and her baby died rolled over on the baby and it died in, in its of the sea so she woke up and she saw her baby dead so she went to the other bed where the other prostitute was named with her live child and she put the dead baby where the live child was and took the live child to be her child well, when the woman woke up, she said, this isn't my baby. Well, it's a dead child. This isn't my baby. So they ended up having a dispute about it. And they ended up in court before King Solomon. And this is how his wisdom grew greatly in the decision. Because it's in the Bible. It came out in the decision he made, how God helped him to find the truth. Hello? Because the truth can be found if we seek it from God. So in the courtroom or before the king, they were both saying, no, it's my child, no, it's my child, and this, no, it's not hers, and telling their story, and back and forth and back and forth, right? So King Solomon didn't waste time with them. He ordered one of his men, go get a sword. And they came back with the sword. And he tells, the, the, he tells them, cut the baby in half chop the baby in half and give half to her and half to her. This, there's a lot of wisdom in this, brothers and sisters, to help you make choices as well. Now, the mother who did, who did all the dishonest things, the prostitute that did all the dishonest things, amen, she knew the baby wasn't hers. She didn't care about that baby. So she says, go ahead, chop him in half. Right? But the true mother of the baby said to the king, no, no, don't kill the child. Give her to her. Amen. Give her, give the baby to her. Why? Because she loved that baby. And she, she didn't want to see the baby die just over a power struggle. And what Solomon gained out of that and what he said, give the baby to this lady, its rightful mother. Amen. Because that's her true mother. That's the baby's true mother because she wouldn't want to let the baby die. Amen. You see, wisdom is good if we learn how to use it. Amen. Learn how to discern. And that's what tonight's Bible study is about. I pray that maybe you gain something out of it. We're going to go ahead and pray, Caesar, and then I'll ask them what they learned, okay? Then you can turn that off after I pray. Let's pray. Father, we thank you tonight for this time that you've given us to study your word. 
I pray that we've gained wisdom tonight. I pray that we've gained insight tonight. Lord, I pray that you help us, Lord God, as it says in James, if we lack wisdom, we know where to ask. We know that we can ask you for it and you give it to us generously, Lord. So tonight I pray for all of us. We all ask you with humble hearts. Give us more wisdom, your wisdom, Lord God. Bless us, Lord God, that we will make wise decisions as Solomon did in the matter of the prostitution. And in every choice and decision and walk of life, help us to stay on every right path and to be blameless, Lord God. And to be, Father God, honest, Father God, and faithful to you, Lord. We thank you for this today, and we know that you will bless us as we pray these, because this is your will for us. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen? Amen.